Hello and welcome to the Momentum Ministry Partners podcast in our fellowship of Christ, our leadership in the local church, and in our parenting of the children entrusted to us, we all seek forward momentum. This podcast is designed to provide that momentum in our God-given roles of leadership as we partner together to equip today's Christian leaders for tomorrow's opportunities. Delaney was mouthing that while I was saying it, so good job, you have that memorized. Uh, I think I do too, but I'm not confident enough to say it, without to say looking. the intro without looking. I've just heard it enough times that I feel like... Yeah. If you're a listener to uh, the podcast, I'm sorry that you have to listen to me say that every time, but it's how it goes. Welcome. So Welcome. Thanks. We have uh, our interns, the Momentum interns with us today. If you're watching on video, they're waving to the camera. Uh, <laughs> if you have not yet discovered the video feature of this podcast, go over to our YouTube channel and check that out. Search uh, Momentum Ministry Partners. So uh, we have Caleb McKee and Delaney Ferguson uh, with us. They are officially our Momentum interns. So uh, we're going to get to know them officially, like as uh, of right officially now. as of right now. We, we weren't official until this moment, Starting today, for now. the past year, we've not been paying you um, yeah. outside of pizza and hoodies. So uh, from now on, you're going to get paid. Congratulations. Yeah, like that. How's that? So it's official now that you're yeah, on the podcast. Official. How's that? Yeah. So one of the reasons we wanted to have you guys on is because you two have made this whole podcast uh, come to reality. So uh, it was a brainstorm of Jeff and I kind of during COVID. We did digital labs for a long time, which those, by the way, are still on our YouTube channel. If you're ever curious to go watch those if you're bored. Um, <laughs> yeah, go pause the podcast right now and go watch the digital labs. Turn this off yeah. and go watch the digital. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but we were like, hey, what, what else can we do that would benefit uh, people that, that we can provide resources to. And so you guys have been the behind the scenes force, uh, of editing the podcast of, uh, coming up with topics, even of, yeah. uh, helping, you know, even communicate to our followers on social media and, and getting questions, receiving all those, uh, and sending them to us. So, uh, I wanted to introduce you all to our audience and get you out from behind uh, the computer and the camera and have you on a podcast. So uh, it is leading up to the week of Momentum Youth Conference. Uh, it will be, what, your guys' first time officially as... Did you go, Delaney, to yeah, youth conference? Yeah. yeah. So I've been to youth conference uh, like two years uh, as a student. Okay. Um, and then I did On the Road. And yes. I attended On the Road and I sang. Delaney was on in the, the band. Team. So with I've Jordan. Had, I've had my fill of like there you go. momentum events. It's been yes. great. Yeah. And true story. Uh, the, when when my family moved to this hot takes right here hot <laughs> takes uh, when my family and I moved to Akron Ohio from Frederick Maryland the very first Sunday uh, we were talking to Todd uh, Todd Schumacher is the pastor the youth pastor here and he was like hey this girl that's singing is actually in our in our youth ministry and it was you and I remember what? thinking like <laughs> man this girl's voice is insane. Uh, and she's really good vocalist. And then here you are now, years later, both interning with us and uh, singing with Jordan Howerton and the Momentum Band. So, do you want to do you want to sing for the podcast, yeah. Delaney? Here, here <laughs> no, you go. I really don't. I'm okay. This, it's this is the part where somebody's you sing. birthday yeah. today, so maybe you could yeah, sing. Yeah, a little happy, happy birthday. birthday. No, okay. <laughs> All right. If if you're listening right now and today's your birthday, please DM us on social media, and we will absolutely 100 percent have Delaney send you a personalized. Yeah, video. Delaney will sing Happy Birthday to you. Yeah, it's five dollars though. Five dollars. <laughs> yes, our new fundraiser. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, I thought maybe we could start and do some like rapid fire questions. Uh, just a fun way to start. I'm kind of um, scared. <laughs> let Let's do it. I'm gonna ask you guys questions. You answer with the don't overthink it. But I will judge you, and our listeners probably will too. So if you answer wrong, uh, ready? Yeah. All right. Summer or winter? Summer. Yeah, summer. Thank it's you. Yeah. Winter is the worst. Okay, but I like Just Christmas. Like, Christmas is fun. Cri it and, can, like, it can. okay, you can't tell me the first snow of the year isn't the most magical day of winter. Fair. If if God could just, like, allow it to snow on Christmas Eve through Christmas Day mm. and then it never snows again, I would be good with that. I would be amazing with and, that. And here's the thing. 
winter is cool, like during the first snow and during Christmas. And those are the only times. But at winter's like coldest, it's just slushy and cold and gross. But summer is consistently like even at its hottest is still like amazing. Fair. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. Where, and like winter at its coldest is miserable. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Especially when you live in Northeast Ohio mm-hmm. and it snows from Halloween to Easter and maybe even before Halloween or bef- or after yeah. Easter. Yeah. So Sometimes into the summer. Low key. I'm not okay. Yeah. I'm not okay with that. Yeah. So I mean, didn't it snow <laughs> that much in Maryland too when you lived down there? No. No. <laughs> no. No. Nope. No. All right. Good. Good answers. Next one. This is a tough one. I will judge you. Chick Fil A or Popeyes? Chick Fil A. Yeah. Oh, you guys. If are... you would have said Chick Fil A or Canes, I would have said Canes so, for sure. I've actually never had Popeyes. What? I've never had the Popeyes chicken. All right, sandwich. we're stopping the recording of this podcast <laughs> and, we're, and going we're going to the right now Popeyes. to get Popeyes. <laughs> I know where they all are in Akron. Really? There's a lot of them. In Akron. Some people will probably unsubscribe from from the podcast, but my personal opinion is that Popeyes is way better than Chick-fil-A. Whoa. If you want to come at me and debate That's me on social crazy. media about this. Honestly, like the the chicken is better. The chicken sandwich is 10 times better. And I honestly think that a lot of people love Chick-fil-A because it's a Christian organization. Yes. You can't tell me Popeyes, Popeyes is cleaner though. I, like if so you go into depend- that back kitchen, that's fair. It depends on it depends on the restaurant. Maybe no, there's. No. <laughs> no. I said maybe it does, it does not depend on the restaurant across okay, the maybe board. It depends across on the, the board. work ethic or the value of the staff. But if we're judging it based on food alone, yeah, I'm just saying. Okay, dining saying. experience though, you are not going to see like bugs crawling around <laughs> the, the Chick-fil-A floor. You know what I'm saying? You might find like a, a rodent in your year to go bag at, mm-hmm. at Popeye's. You know what I'm saying? But the chicken sandwich tastes 10 times better. Even if you have extra protein with the cockroaches I'm, and the I'm, rats. I'm, I'm, I'm good for it. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sure this will be a hotly debated. Topic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's go another direction. Chipotle or Taco Bell. Oh, oh, oh I don't Chipotle. know. Yeah. I, here. I, Probably Chipotle. It's definitely Chipotle. She's hesitating. Because I really like the Taco Bell quesadilla and the Baja Blast. I literally was just yeah, in here. Baja yes. Blast. They put yeah. uh, Baja Blast, the canned Baja Blasts in the I fridge. I saw that. And they're Actually, so good. I did a double take walking past the refrigerator. They're really good. And saw those I think hot yeah. take. I think the can is better than um, Ooh, okay. the Taco Bell. Have to That's a that. fact. All right. I, I'm a Taco Bell guy. I love Chipotle, but I'm a Taco Bell guy just because it's yeah. cheap. It's cheaper than Chipotle. Yeah. I would think that that I thought that would have appealed to the college students. Okay, go ahead. We might have to cut this part out because I don't know if I'm allowed to (laughs) use this word on the Momentum podcast. But Taco Bell gives me crazy diarrhea, and so I can't I can't eat Taco Bell. I never every time. I feel like we're gonna cut this part (laughs) out. That's let's be honest though. If this stays in, that's nothing new to me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, yeah, I'm done. All right, we're let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, Rapid fire question number four. Cats or dogs? Dogs. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I knew I liked you guys. Uh, favorite Spotify playlist? Oh, so I'm actually a psychopath, and everyone makes fun of me for this. I don't have, like, Spotify playlists. I have, like, all – I just ha- like all my songs. I have, Wait, you what? Just have like you songs? listen to your I own, have, like, Del Ruth music? No, Is no, that no, what no. <laughs> no. So, like, under your, like, liked songs in Spotify – I just like all my songs, and so I have like a library of like yo, that's eight hundred songs. That actually is weird. I'm sorry. So I just like every time I get in my car, I just like shuffle and I just plays. I don't make playlists. Oh wow! Unless it's for like a special occasion. Oh wow! I don't know why. I don't, I don't I just know think what this to do is with easier. that right now. Hmm. <laughs> so what if you no, want a specific of list of songs or a specific? I just like you I just g- random. If I'm in like a random. mood, if I'm in like a, in a like mood. a, if she's in a mood. <laughs> like, like the it's perfect a rainy example. day. Your dog just died. Whoa! You like you? <laughs> I don't know. Whoa! <laughs> you need no. Some. Like, like I was driving home. I was on a road trip, and the windows down. Your Taco like, Bell's hitting. <laughs> <laughs> no, like if I'm gonna, yeah. So all I'd say, I don't use playlists. All right, interesting. I I love making playlists for like different seasons. For I have different genres. Mm. Like, cause you know, you don't want to go from like, 
a Jordan Howerton song to then like some crazy rap song or I, like yeah. I don't know. That just doesn't that Diversity. doesn't work for me. I like all things. I just want to listen to them as a collective whole. Kid, what do yeah, you got? The music I listen to the most is either rap. And actually, when I started working at Momentum, Dell put me onto like some punk rock music, mm. and I listen to a lot of that now. Um, so it's either one of those two, but it's it's a lot of rap and a lot of like vibey, like melodic R and B ish okay. kind of rap. I like especially that. while I'm longboarding. Yeah, the playlist is called "I Do Be Vibing" though. There you go. <laughs> I have a I have a, a Spotify playlist called Study Beats, and it's just all like upbeat, yeah. instrumental, like, like lo-fi hip hop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I love that. What are you studying for? Yeah. Well, it's like uh, when I work. Then I why is it called studying? <laughs> it's called Study Beats for when I study. I to be fair, I created it while I was doing grad school. Does mm-hmm. that count? Sounds like you should change the name. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. We're moving on. <laughs> Favorite work boss. Oh, they both, uh, they both paused. Why would you and have, have us answer I that? I just wanted to see what your reaction Why would you do that? Because Eric is the correct answer. I said there were right or wrong so answers here. So I guess this might be important for everyone to know. We have like <laughs> four bosses. Yeah. Like it's like it's crazy. So I don't, uh, what? Yeah. I can't answer that. And plus not all of you like, oh, I guess majority of you live here. But like, yeah. I don't know. I can't answer that. <laughs> Why? Jesus. It's, there you Jesus go. is my favorite boss. Well played, sir. Well played. Right under Jeff or <laughs> over is no, Jesus. Jeff Bogue Jeff and then Jesus. And then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. In he, that order. He will be order. very proud. Yeah. <laughs> or Jesus maybe he would won't. Be very proud. Uh, Jesus <laughs> would be proud. All right. Uh, what about this one? Favorite Instagram or TikTok account to follow? Ooh. And not Ooh. your own, Delaney. Not your own. What? Not your own. I don't know. I, I just actually have a good answer. Um, I follow this. I don't remember what it's called. It's called like Meniagram or something. And it's this Enneagram account. And they post like um, all these different like um, like letters to a little eight or like letters to a little hmm. four and like just helping you understand your Enneagram better. Okay. And like it's re- and it's like a Christian account. So like everything is like cool. filtered through that lens. And it's actually like super helpful. And Very I really, cool. really love it. Wait, are you what? What? You're an eight, right? On the Enneagram, I'm an eight as You're well. You're both eights. Yeah, we're both I'm eights. I'm a seven. Really? Yeah. Sevens are best, I'm just saying. Mm. Sevens usually think they're best, and eights think they are. Ones do too. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Favorite account? <laughs> uh, He's um, like, I don't know if I can say on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm filtering the accounts that I... I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I really like... Um, <laughs> I the U <you> version app. <laughs> yeah, the U version app. That's my favorite. I don't know. I don't think I have an account that I like, f- like fly to. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, yeah. Unless it's like there's a couple comedians that I follow that I really really like. Um, who are gonna remain nameless? Okay, none all of them right, are right. Christian comedians. I think Fair. Jim Gaffigan. I can say I can say him. He's sure. clean. He's mostly clean. Yeah. I don't listen to comedians. I don't know. He, I, think I think I'm the funniest person I know. So. Yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eric Miller is the comedian I listen to. I, see, I told you there are right or wrong answers to yeah. this. I'm devastated that both of you run the Momentum Ministry Partners accounts and you didn't say Momentum. Yeah, Ministry. but I'm on it so much. I feel like it's cringy I even tried if to I watch that on myself. A yeah. Also, though, so when I go like on the Momentum like Instagram account, I have actually never told you this. There is a really funny page that Momentum follows some or follows that I watch sometimes it's called like Christians who curse sometimes oh, yes. <laughs> that account's they're, really funny no, not gonna lie they're one of my favorite Instagram so, I was like I don't know I was like momentum follows them I was like wait I get it <laughs> it's really yeah. funny the, the stuff they post on their on like their videos on their feed I don't know what you on their homepage are like funny Christian videos but if you watch their stories, like every day they have like really in-depth conversations about hard-hitting topics. Mm, so yeah. Yeah. that's honestly why I like them. But some of the yeah. I will just quick disclaimer: some of their their like memes are as close as you can get to the that's line. That's fair. Yeah. That is fair. So just like quick disclaimer: that is fair. If you're like a young, that's a very good right disclaimer. Now, it's close to the line. That's a very good. So disclaimer. don't come for us if you're a parent <laughs> and then your kid hops on it and yeah. This is where I will just say yeah, don't come the for interns. Us started following them and well, uh, wait <laughs> hold on a minute pause or maybe it was wait carly it was carly for yeah, sure it was, Car- it was Ar- jeff it was 
Jeff. It was yeah. Jeff. It was Jeff, Ed. Jeff spin on. <laughs> it was Ed Lewis. It was Ed Lewis. <laughs> oh man, I love it. All right, what about food you absolutely refuse to eat? I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> So Caleb is pushing the one <laughs> microphone that they're sharing yeah. very close to her face. I don't know. I think, oh, oh, I have an answer. I So I used to be a vegetarian for like four years. Okay. Oh, why was that okay. funny? <laughs> um, and then I eat chicken now. Okay. But I don't eat red meat. I will not eat red meat. I think it's gross. So red meat. Red meat is my answer. All right. We're going to leave like it at that. I feel like that's valid. We're going to leave it at that. Why? Did you want to like come for me? Or? No, I'm not. I I just said we're going to leave it at that. Okay. We'll talk offline. <laughs> the one food I will not eat is Taco Bell because it gives me diarrhea. There you go. All right. We're back <laughs> to that. I'm, I'm going to see how many times I can use the word <laughs> diarrhea in the podcast. <laughs> oh, my. All right. What about this one? Uh, I heard the uh, the collective band arguing this one. I know this is widely debated, but are there more doors or windows in the world? No, that wasn't the question. No, it was. No, no, no. It was. It was wheels or. Oh, we. Oh. Wheels it was. Doors. Okay, well then I'm changing the question. Are there more doors or windows? Definitely windows. Yeah, got to be windows. Because if you think if see here, mm. no, because like wheels, wheels and what was it? Not, doors. Not wheels. Wheels is not a part of the question. No, I know, but I'm <laughs> saying like I feel like. You can like differentiate, or like the ratio is a lot clearer in your mind of doors and windows. If you're thinking about like a house or like buildings, like there's gonna be more windows in a building than doors. There just has to be. Does every office in a skyscraper have a door and a window? I don't know. And some of them don't have windows. I don't like this question. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right. You messed it up. La- <laughs> this wasn't <laughs> I valid. I did mess it up. I yes, pr- you did. I purposely changed it. Uh, play that clip back. No, you did not use it. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, last one. Could Caleb wrestle a grizzly bear I and come out victorious? I hate this question. <laughs> no. We we have debated this in the office for okay. a while. <laughs> let, me, let me just say this, That's okay? Let's this. Let's start here. Once <laughs> once I get past the grizzly bear's jaws and get on its back, it's done, okay? <laughs> Easy rear naked like, choke. What if you don't so do that? I just need to survive one sw- I just got bit on the face by a Great Dane like what? a week ago. Yeah, I was I was dog sitting and the dog latched onto my face. I didn't even hurt that. Die. Didn't didn't even hurt that bad. Okay. <laughs> And a, a Great Dane's bite has to be, like, oh, man. at least half of a grizzly bear's bite. Because Great Danes are large animals, okay? The, but, okay, oh, I'm man. smarter than the bear, though. I just love how convinced David and Goliath. David and Goliath. Let's move on. Oh, man. Okay. I just wanted to bring this up one more time. The last time. No, the last time. I, honestly, can I just say this as well? <laughs> <laughs> I had forgotten about this, and now it's right back in my brain. I'm going to be talking so, about it all day now. Bethany and I have been binge watching Alone, which is a show on the History Channel, yeah. where these guys go out in, guys and girls, they go out in wilderness, and they have to live on their own with 10 items. Yeah, it's a crazy show. It's crazy. But mm-hmm. the one that, the season we're currently watching is on Grizzly Island, and they are just bears everywhere. And so they, they these people, like, so Island. it's... This question may have gone out of your mind, Caleb, but every time I see a grizzly bear in the evening watching alone, I think of, could Caleb wrestle this you bear? You picture me latched on and the back of every it. time I think the answer is no, you would die. Wow. <laughs> That's slander. Every time. That is slander. Every time. All right. Uh, let's hit our real questions now that we've killed. I don't even know how much time because I forgot to start my recording, but... Um, we probably have five minutes left of this podcast episode, but let's do this. Let, let's hit some questions. Uh, I'd love just for you guys to share a little bit about who you are, what you do. Um, did you ever think when you were like a three-year-old growing up in the world that you were going to be an intern work, working with Momentum? Was that like your goal? Like <laughs> yeah. when did that become like a thing? Like talk to me a little bit about that. Um, yeah. So I actually grew up in a ministry family. Mm-hmm. So I remember asking actually really early on um, my dad if when he died, if I was going to inherit the ministry that he was running. So like actually really early on from the get go, I was like doing ministries on my radar. Um, so as a little kid, yeah, mm-hmm. 
um, as a high schooler and a middle schooler, I, I did my best effort to go completely off the rails. Okay. Um, and so I wouldn't have guessed it then, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely been something that I've been around and like has been on my radar. And then, um, what I, I was the other question was what I do for momentum. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do for momentum? What do, what do I do for momentum? <laughs> What's your role? I actually don't know what my official title is, but conference yeah, I'm a conference intern. Thank you, Delaney. And I, I do stuff, <clears throat> conference intern stuff, you know, like things that a conference intern would do. There you go. Yeah. It's it's primarily called other duties as assigned. <laughs> yeah. Is your job description. Honestly, kind of that is I what it is. I think we right almost now. handed you a blank sheet of paper and said, "Here you go." Yeah. Welcome to the team. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. it is mostly just projects like yep. that I so like and a lot of video projects. Like I do mm-hmm. that I produce the momentum mm-hmm. podcast and like mm-hmm. Um, work you on edit a lot, a lot of, the, of the videos. Yeah, edit a lot of the videos. Yeah. Just kind of whatever, whatever gets tossed my way, I do. Yep. So, okay. Yeah. I, I also bear the burden of being the favorite intern. It's a part Ooh, of my. Okay. It's a tough burden yeah. to bear. Yeah. He's so. just trying to talk about bears more, and you realize he's <laughs> any <laughs> any way he can get it in. No, I. So, like I said, I like went to momentum, like when I was a student and stuff. Um, and it's actually really funny. I don't know if I've ever told you this, but there was one year at momentum. Um, they had like a student band audition and like they had like the student band and literally, and I just didn't audition for it. Um, I was like, I don't want to do it, whatever. I don't even care. Like every single one of my friends auditioned for it and like every single one got in. So Hmm. I was like so sad when I was like, oh, they're all, but but then like last year or yeah, Momentum Mm -hmm. on the Road, I actually got to Mm -hmm. do the band and I guess, I don't know if you mentioned this year, like I'll be on the worship team again. And so I guess it's crazy. Like how that kind of came full circle and like something I'm actually like really grateful for. Um, I guess in terms of like working for momentum, like never like expected that. Um, even just like being like, you know, being on the road. It's funny. I feel like I've gotten to see, like I've been as a student, I've been on the band and now I've been working for momentum. Yeah. Um, and it's been great. Um, yeah, I guess going into a ministry, like, role is never something like I expected um I did uh the like grace college thing and um that's actually how I like got connected to it I got an email momentum's looking for interns I was like I need a job (laughs) and I was like I think I can like do this (laughs) and so it's been really good um and I'm kind of just figuring it out um in terms of my role what I actually do um, I'm the communications intern, so I do like a lot of social media, create a lot of those posts, um, kind of similar to Caleb's mm-hmm. role as like projects as assigned. We overlap a lot. Yeah. We overlap yeah. a lot. It's actually really interesting, um, but we make it work. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're functioning so, as far as we know. <laughs> no, you guys have done, you guys both, honestly, I have told you this before, but I want to say this publicly. You guys have both done a phenomenal job. Uh, so w- you're killing it. You're doing a great job. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and I think we also. I mean, I could be wrong. Delaney might feel might feel differently, but I think we also with when we overlap, we work together really well, which is really rare for yeah. two eights. Like for mm-hmm. two eights to be able to work together on projects, kind of mm-hmm. kind of rare. But yeah, yeah, very good. All right. So if it's the world according to Caleb and Delaney, what's your preferred future? Like fast forward three, five, ten years down the road. Where are you at? What are you doing? What's your career? I am dictator of the world. <laughs> okay, that's where I take the mic. Uh. After wrestling a bear. <laughs> yeah. And coming out victorious. Wait, no. So like career-wise sure. or like what? Yeah. So um, I would love to be in full-time ministry. Um, the, my like dream is to run something around foster care um, and do some sort of... So my sister's actually going to to school to do social work right now and then um so she wants to hit it from from that side and i want to attack that issue from the ministry side and so um working together and creating because there's just a lot of uh brokenness and hurt in that in that space right now and i think adoption and and taking care of the weak and uh building up those who are lost and alone and afraid is um Mm -hmm. something that's on god's heart and he's Mm -hmm. placed that calling on my heart and i think the the way that i can best address that is by um taking care of the foster care system, especially because it's cool. it's probably about to be flooded with the, the Roe v. Wade decision that just sure. happened. And so, sure. um, and I'm also writing a book and so I'd love to be a book and a novel. And so, yeah. um, writing and, and telling stories and feeding people souls in that way as well. 
So that's where cool. I'd like to be in like Very cool. Yeah, down the road. Yeah. That and plus the dictator thing would be pretty fun <laughs> as well. Yeah. Um I think for me I have no idea <laughs> what I want to do and I think I mean maybe this is kind of like a side chain. I think that's like totally okay. I think a lot of um I guess what is the title of this podcast live after high school and like trying mm-hmm. to give advice. And mm-hmm. I, I went to a college prep school. And so like all, all of high school, it was like, figure it out, figure it out, figure it out. Like, what do you want to do? And, um, I graduated high school, um, went to school for a semester for ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I was like, this is something I can probably always use. And I, like everything I learned, like in that semester was like really valuable and I'm really grateful for it. But mm-hmm. ultimately at the end of that semester, I just decided like, for a lot of reasons, it would be wiser um, to just work. Um, and then I guess that's where like momentum came in. And uh, I actually was really, it's funny, I was in school for ministry, kind of was like, don't think I want to do this. And now I'm like essentially working in full-time ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think number one, it's just like, okay, not knowing and just figuring it out as long as you're being like proactive yep. in your life, I yep. guess, um, and having something there um, that you're working mm-hmm. towards figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, yeah, I kind of forget yeah. what I was gonna say. <laughs> no, about I think that. that's I think that's super good because honestly, as you guys know, that's a big part of what we want our internship program to be is to help you yeah. figure out how do you develop and grow as leaders, how do you develop and grow in your walk with the Lord, how do you mature in your understanding and perspective of being a team and all that. So yeah, yeah it's good. And I just want to add to that as well. I think um, it's important to note in that. Uh, Delaney is pretty like fresh out of high school. You're what, 19? Mm-hmm. And I'm uh, 23. Mm-hmm. And so like when I when when I was, I actually just turned 23 today, yeah. Is what? Is your birthday? Yeah. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Delaney, you have to sing to him. <laughs> is this real? Are yeah. you not? Are you making this up? No, Stop. Kidding. That's so funny. Wait, can we just, can we just brush past that what? though for a second? <laughs> we can... <laughs> I don't like like celebrating my birthday. This is like, hilarious. So yeah. All right. So soon uh, we're gonna ha- post a video of Delaney, <laughs> Delaney singing, singing "Happy, Happy Birthday, birthday to Me." Kayla. Yeah, it's callback. <laughs> That's so funny. No, but okay. So when I was like eighteen or nineteen, though, I didn't have a like like uh, I I didn't even know that I was gonna write a novel, and I hadn't even really started writing like sure. writing writing, and so and I didn't know that I was gonna be doing full time. I was going to college for communications, and mm-hmm. so like. Um, I think it very much makes sense when you're in like the stage of life that Dell is in, in that age, like to kind of be, and I think it's healthy to kind of be like, I'm not locked into this one thing right. and I'm going to stay open to where God's going to lead me and just follow where God yeah. leads you. Yeah. And, and I think that's what you're doing right now. And I think, for sure. and I think as, uh, and, I, and I'm just starting to hit the stage of life where I do need to have that figured out. And so, um, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to highlight that and say, I think that makes a yeah. lot of, like when you compare our plans to, or our answers to that question, I think like, it's just important yep. to note that, that For life sure. stage. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So since you guys started your internship, we started last fall, uh, kind of give us like, just what's maybe one big thing that you feel like you've learned, uh, or, or where like being a part of the Momentum Ministry Partners internship has added value to you and your your life that could be leadership that mm-hmm. could be something spiritual that could be whatever yeah I think for me it's definitely like um given me a good sense of like knowing where my strengths are and like strengths like I didn't know I had and like weaknesses and like weaknesses mm-hmm. like I didn't know I had mm-hmm. um just in terms of like I don't know organizational skills communication skills like you know important <laughs> life stuff mm-hmm. um and Oh, is the second half of the question? <laughs> just, the, just like what yeah, have you one, learned? One thing you've learned. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably given me like, and I've be, I've been in a volunteer role with ministry like for a couple of years now, but I guess like actually working in ministry, like it's given me like um, a new appreciation for it in kind of like um, the sense of it, it's hard because it's like, yeah, it's my job, but like, it's more than a job, right. which is like weird balancing that. And like, mm-hmm. I guess working that out in my head. Um, and like I said, I'm kind of in like a full time ish ministry yep. thing, working for momentum. And then I'm also, um, on staff with, um, a college ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess, um, it's just interesting seeing, um, everyone's role play out and just, um, appreciating 
what everyone does because it's really it's it's interesting it's like being in a volunteer role is like a lot different and i think definitely has prepared me for like what a job in ministry is um or an internship or whatever um but yeah yeah. welcome to ministry (laughs) that is the lifelong dilemma like yeah it is your your career your job uh but it's it's so much bigger than that too yeah and by the way just because this thought was popping in my head you guys are both super creative and and so I love that you get to like leverage all of that in what you do. And so I would say, regardless of where you go or what you do, always look to leverage the gifts and abilities that God's given you to make maximum impact for his kingdom. Like that's, if you can figure that out, you'll be good. Yeah, you'll be real good. Yeah. yeah Caleb, thanks. what about you? What's, yeah. what's one thing you've learned? Uh, I think, well, so, okay. So I had a, a youth ministry internship before this mm-hmm. at a different church mm-hmm. and I just truly, I was on stage a lot and in front of the kids and interacting with parents a lot. And I started to get, just to be totally honest, a little bit of a big head. And so it was really healthy for me to like switch gears and to end up behind the camera and behind Mm -hmm. the scenes and be the guy who wasn't getting like the, Mm -hmm. the constant attaboy and more Mm -hmm. of just solid work because Mm -hmm. God put me here. And so I'm going to work faithfully and diligently. Yeah. And so, and, and really, and so it's been really humbling in a really healthy, mm-hmm. good way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in the midst of that, also still figuring out how to take initiative from behind the scenes. So I don't have to be on stage giving a sermon yep. to take initiative, that I can do that from behind the scenes as long as yeah. I'm faithfully and diligently following God. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. All right. Uh, as we wind down this discussion, uh, I told you guys, let, let, you guys are both in a unique uh, time and season in your lives, right? So you're not in high school, you're not uh, students anymore, you, you know, college maybe, but uh, w- you get to speak kind of into both worlds, right? So uh, how would you, what advice would you give maybe, or how would you uh, challenge, encourage our students who might be listening to this uh, to prepare them for life after high school? And then we'll go the other side, we'll kind of flip the script on that and we'll look at uh, like, how would you guys speak to the adults uh, who are listening to this podcast? What would you want them to know about students uh, in our culture and context today? Do you want me to go first? Or? Yeah. Okay. So I think if I could give a piece of advice to students, it would be to slow down and be okay being exactly where you're at. So when I graduated high school, I was very hungry to jump into the next phase of life, like to just skip. I didn't want to do the college thing. I wanted to like mm. skip to where I was um, like... I mean, at the time, I didn't want to be married, but skip to where I was like married and had my own house and had kids and had a job sure. and my career yeah. and just be, like be that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think God has you exactly where he wants you right now. And there's a lot of things that I would have, if I would have just jumped mm-hmm. from, if I would have at 18 years old mm-hmm. jumped into full-time ministry, uh, I would have missed a lot of the maturing process and the, the kind of the adventure that God's taken me on. So yeah. Uh, just lean into the adventure. I think that God's bringing you on. And then if I can just add to that, I would say um, the best adventures are done together. And so as God's leading you on an adventure, it's super, 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 super crucial that you find your fellowship, that you find your, your community, that you find your brothers or your sisters um, that are going to go on that adventure with you uh, and, and encourage you and pick you up when you fall. Because you are going to fall. It's a part of sure. the best adventures have the most scars, right? And so um, part of going on that adventure means you're going you're gonna to fall. You're going to get beaten up. Um, you're going to feel like crap. And so having people to pick you up as you're going along on that adventure and mm. just almost at times I just need people to like push me forward mm. um, and, and call me out and be like, dude, wh- like, what are you doing? Get up and keep going. Like mm. go where God is calling you. And so mm. um, to, to relax in the fact that you're going on the story that God's writing um, mm. and to do that with people that, that are mm. on, on the same page. Mm. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. I think you actually like touched on a lot of the stuff. I was going to, um, I think one thing I would say would be, um, be more proactive than you think you need to be in terms of, I guess it's contrary to what I said. I'm not saying you have to like have it figured out. Um, but I think the more you can get an idea of what you want, the more, um, you can figure that out because what you want is going to change 20 different times. And I think that's just important to, um, not even um, 
to have it figured out but like know how to sort that out in your head and I think that's a lot of like what growing up is and um I guess just in being proactive I guess Caleb like touched on this a little bit um something like interesting for me right now so I think I mentioned like I'm not in school right now I'm doing the full-time ministry thing and um kind of what you were saying um I'm on a very I'm in a very different world than a lot of like my peers who are Mm -hmm. at college or like are doing college with this or whatever. Um, and so it's weird because, um, like I have a community, but like all our rhythms are like so different. And so like finding that time together is like so hard. Um, and so I guess, um, well, at least for me, like throughout high school, like I was just always surrounded by people um which I guess naturally brought out like the extrovert in me and so once uh the second I wasn't surrounded by people I was kind of like what is this like how do I navigate it um so it's important knowing how to navigate that but then like I said earlier being proactive in like how am I going to have community around me? Like, how am I going to have people yeah. to spur me on yeah. um, biblical friendship? And I think just also, also finding the people who like want the same thing. Cause mm. um, you, you can want that as much as anything, but if the people you're trying to do that with, they don't want that same thing. Yep. Um, you know, yeah. nothing. No, happen. I love what you guys are saying. Cause I think a lot of that you can find in c- the context of the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of those things of finding that community of, of being the proactive, you know, looking for those experiences. A lot of that is, is the heartbeat of what we do with momentum, mm-hmm. uh, and going on a travel team, going to an urban center, getting to the momentum youth conference, like all of those things are experiences that you can find your community, the people yeah. who are going to challenge you, encourage you, uh, support you uh, and give you those experiences. So I love that. Uh, even as I'm listening, that's some of what I'm I'm hearing you guys saying. Yeah, I just I had another thought as well. I appreciate that, and I, I just had another thought as well. One of the things I wish, like if I could go back and have a conversation with 18 year old Caleb, mm-hmm. um, one of the things I would have told him is that uh, you are going to have to like really be willing to die to your own dreams, because mm. um, there are things that. Um, I still, there's a part of my soul that still Mm. wants, um, like wants to really focus on making money. Mm. Um, so go make as much money as possible. There's a part of my soul that still, um, you know, wants to indulge in in sexual sin and, in Mm. in different parts of that. And so, Mm. um, the American dream of, I think it's shifted a little bit for our generation. I think, I think Gen Z has the American dream of being fully independent and doing yep. what you want when you want. Yep. Um, and I think for especially young men my age, that looks like being in the shape you want to be in, having a nice car, having a hot girlfriend, and um, being able to just do whatever whenever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I wish I could have gone back and um, mm. told my younger self, You're, you just have to die to that. And mm. the... Um, it's only within the past couple of years that I've figured that out and the the spiritual growth that's happened in my life has been exponential once I let go of the, um, mm. and it was so easy to break sin patterns when my goal wasn't yeah. to have a smoking hot girlfriend. Like it was easy to stop like yep. sleeping with my girlfriend because right. it was uh, suddenly the goal changed. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And yep. so, um, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things I wish that I could have mm. like figured out earlier. And so if you can Good. get that, if you can die to that American yeah. Gen Z Western dream, you'll be in, uh, you'll be yeah. light years beyond yeah. your peers. Yeah, yield, surrender your life to the Lord, yeah. let Him lead and follow you. Good. All right, what what advice would you guys give to parents, pastors, the adults kind of listening to this? Uh, what what would help maybe encourage them in understanding uh, a student mindset? I think what I would say is um giving like le- pastors parents whatever like giving your student um the space to fail is like really important um not not for the sake of um figure it out yourself or like you messed up or and, like but like I don't know I just think there's a lot of value in um I don't know uh it's, it's almost humbling and it's a part of like growing up. And I think if you don't fail, um, and you don't have those experiences, um, you're never going to know how to 
yeah. figure anything out for yourself. Yeah. Um, which I don't know. I think I'm like learning a lot of that, like not being, cause I think like college is great. If you're in college, I'm not dogging on college or anything right. like that, but it in a sense is a big bubble of like, um, you know, it's that weird almost extension of high school, but like you have this freedom and you're still like, you know, yep. people are in charge of you kind of, but they're not. And so, um, I think the more parents can just be a support system, offering advice, letting them figure it out, not really, um, even like pastors in, cause I think it, I guess on the pastor side of it, um, at the end of the day, I think something that's really important and valuable for people to accept is, um, we're all just trying our best to follow Jesus <laughs> and yeah. no, none of us are going to do it perfectly. Yeah. And I think the second we all stop pretending is like the second, um, we can really start appreciating, mm. uh, living life together mm-hmm. and helping each other yep. figure it out. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Delaney, I love it. It's like, you've been listening to the momentum podcast. Cause we, <laughs> and, but I mean, I mean that genuinely, like I know that you have, cause you edit these, but, uh, well. the, the issue, <laughs> the issue of, of like vulnerability breeds vulnerability. Like we, we talk often on this podcast about asking questions and listen and not always needing to be the expert. Yeah. And so I, I love that. I think you're, you're spot on with that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And I like agree with everything Delaney just said. And I, I the only thing I want to add to that, um, and in some ways this is going to kind of, I guess be a call to action, but you and talking to the parents, you are your kids first glimpse and first set of, uh, of spiritual mentors and disciplers. And so one yeah. of the greatest gifts my parents gave to me growing up mm. is that I could tell based off the way they lived and the mm. way they loved other people yep. that they thought the Jesus thing was real, yep. that it wasn't something that they talked about and asked me to go to youth group and they sent me to church and they sent me to church camps and they, it wasn't something that they talked about or threw money at. It was, it was the way that they lived their lives. Yep. And so growing up, there wasn't, even when I wasn't walking intimately with Jesus, there was never a doubt in my mind that my parents truly were far gone on the mm-hmm. Jesus thing, that they were all out, that they were mm-hmm. into it. Yeah. Um, and so I think as a parent, it, it's, in some ways it needs to be a little bit sobering and almost a little bit like mm. scary, but uh, in other ways, I think it's a great joy and a great privilege to you. You get to be the first one for your kids to look at and go, Oh, this this Jesus thing is real, and mm-hmm. I I have confidence in that because of the way I've watched my dad live, the way I've watched my mom live, and I think yeah. um, there there was a point actually where I was in high school where um, uh, I was totally off the rails, um, like involved in different like gang things, and um, and my dad was unsure if I was going to come home. Um, my sister had just tried to take her own life, mm-hmm. and by the way, I'm sharing things that have been shared sure, before, sure, so. Sure. Yeah. Um, my sister, I just, uh, was flirting with that. Um, I don't know if she had attempted to it, but, mm-hmm. um, she was flirting with that. And so my dad didn't know if my sister was going to make it through that, mm-hmm. that year. He didn't know if I was going to make it through that year. And then in the midst of that, um, the doctors found, did a CAT scan, found a, um, a, a mass on my mom's pancreas. Mm-hmm. Um, and it ended up being a, a false reading, but he didn't know that at the time. Mm-hmm. So, um, wow. he's, he's certain that his son's going to end up dead or in jail. He's, he's not certain that his, his daughter's going to, going to make it out of the year alive. And, um, mm. his wife, he thinks his wife has pancreatic cancer and that's not when people survive. Wow. Right. Um, and in the midst of that, he, God has entrusted him with planting and leading a church that's mm-hmm. very rapidly growing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember, um, uh, hearing a conversation between him and my mom. Uh, where my dad was just sobbing. Mm. Um, and the the only words that um, I, I remember him saying were, my God is good. Mm. Um, and so that was in the midst of that, wow. that he's um, um, the only thing that he can manage to, to get out in that moment as he's emotionally processing mm. that is my God is good. Um, and so as a parent, I think uh, that has to be your primary role. As your kid begins to look... Um, for, um, and cause they're going to hit failure, like Delaney yeah. said. Um, and it's, it's going to be confusing and weird and scary cause they're figuring out how to be adults. And so for you to no matter what is going on to look at God and say, my God is good. Mm. Um, I think is, is the best mm. gift that you can give your, your student. Wow. Thank you guys for sharing that. This is super good. Yeah. I love your hearts in that. Thank you for your honesty and your emotion, your vulnerability in that. That's, that's amazing. So Thank you. I know our listeners will be encouraged by that. Um, 
as always, we we would encourage you to uh, to share this podcast. If uh, you have a student who would benefit from listening to this conversation and uh, and these these two young leaders uh, pouring their hearts out and investing, even if they're leading you astray uh, by talking about <laughs> Chick Fil A being better than Popeye. So, um, thank you guys seriously for uh, tuning in to today's episode. Uh, if you would rate, review, subscribe to this podcast, it not only lets you know of upcoming episodes, but uh, helps others know about it as well. Uh, you can follow us and check out everything that Caleb and Delaney are working on. Uh, we are on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all the things. Um, so check us out uh, at Momentum Ministry Partners. Uh, and if you have any questions you'd like us to cover on an upcoming episode, uh, topics you can be submitted uh, and you send us your questions. So uh, you can DM us on social media or send those to us at info at buildmomentum.org. All right, any final words? I don't, I don't think so. Besides Delaney is for sure editing <clears throat> this one. Caleb doesn't ever know how to end his like first uh-uh. of the week video, so no. I think we should just like awkwardly let this one end too. Yeah, that's normally that's normally what I do. I just cut it. I like awkwardly look at the camera and heart. Then we're cutting it now. Bye. Actually, I have one more thing to say. No, I don't. I just wanted to make it awkward again. Thanks. We can cut it. Cool. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, that was good. Nice.